Can everyone hear me? Thumbs up. All right. Welcome, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Wow, we're close to Christmas. Who would have ever thunk it? Everybody, I'm sure, has all their shopping done. Good evening. Good evening to everyone. We're just going to get going here in a few minutes. And I'm so excited for some things that are happening and for the new year and for this training. I haven't done a training in a long time, so I got a little nerves going here, I got to say. So I hope that what we talk about today is somewhat informative and I hope beyond a shadow of a doubt that will help everybody because after all, we are one team and we have got some amazing momentum going here in the last month. So we'll just give it a few more minutes, everyone, to get on. I want to see how many people we got rolling here. Wow, Elsa and Paula and Lori and Doris and Beth. Looks like I might be seeing Beth in January in Florida. That'll be fun. And Angela, Liz, wow, we got a great crowd tonight. Super excited to see everybody on here. Karen, Angela, Beth, Brenda, Carlin, Carol, Carrie Cartwright is on tonight. That's good to see. Evelyn, Elsa, Doris, Heather, Irene Vaxberg, Jen Moyer is in the house. Catherine Booker, Kevin Dugay, my liney. Dugsy, how are you? Good to see everybody. Okay, let me just see here. We got the recording going. Everybody like my Vox Life jacket tonight? The red Vox Life? I'm either that or I'm a, an usher at the theater, one or the other. So great. Another minute here, guys. And we'll get rolling here. I want to see if... Just one second here. Terry Redmond, nice to see you. Evelyn, thank you. Loves the jacket. I knew if I held on to this long enough, it might come back in style. What else? Oh, Patty Grass is on here. Hi, Patty. Tracy and Achai get looking forward to seeing Tracy. She's coming down our way from Winnipeg in the, in the new year and is going to be here for our event in Toronto. I'm excited to see that. We might even have Tracy do a little talking at our event if she's open to it. Okay. Let's get rolling here. Well, first of all, I'd like to welcome everybody to the call tonight. I'm just going to look for my good buddy, Paul Austin on here. There he is. Paul, I just moved you up here in, where are you here? Polly, 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 there you are. I'm just gonna unmute you, Paul. Can you hear me, buddy? Hey, Terry, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm just actually taking my aunt home here, so I'll be kinda off for about five. Yeah, minutes. no worries, okay, jump back on when you yeah, can. Yeah, I'll, no I'll jump worries. back, yep. Yeah. Okay, well, let's get rolling, guys. Um, welcome to our call for uh, Monday, December 17th today. I'm just so excited and so grateful to have the opportunity to train tonight. And I think, you know, one of the things that I decided to talk about um, tonight is, is the issue uh, and the advantages of using Facebook. I know that we have a lot of people that have are new, um, we've had some amazing growth in the last two to three months. The growth in Vox Life has just been phenomenal. And I know that I've got some leaders, up and coming leaders on this call tonight that have started to utilize and leverage Facebook, uh, not only um, uh, you know, on their own personal profile, um, but other social media platforms, perhaps um, like Instagram or LinkedIn or other 
um, social media platforms and has re have really seen uh, an important growth in their business. And so I thought going into Christmas, since this is our last training before uh, our Christmas break, I thought it would be sort of apropos to sort of talk and, and review a little bit about the importance and the leveraging of, of Facebook and not Facebook as necessarily a business page per se, but Facebook on your own personal profile and why I think that that's important. And um, I have been very, very blessed. I've built a phenomenal business in the last two and a half years. And I got to tell you, I made a ton of mistakes um, building this and, and utilizing Facebook. And I got to say to you, did it scare me using Facebook? Absolutely. Absolutely, it scared. It scared the living daylights out of me at times. Because I think one of the biggest things we always worry about, A, is what, what are people going to think of us? You know, what am I doing here? Am I going to offend people? And am I going to, you know, come across as, you know, sort of that person that's um, a salesy person or something? And if, if I believe if faith, Facebook is utilized properly, then I believe it can be a phenomenal, phenomenal tool. And I think when we look at whether it's Facebook, whether it's Instagram, whether it's LinkedIn, whether it's Twitter, um, if we utilize it in a way that is not, I always compare it, and I've said this before, there's two types of dogs that come in a room, one that licks you and doesn't stop licking you, which you want to be, you know, push that dog away and say, quit it. Or that dog that just comes in and kind of wags his tail, looks at you and goes and lays in the corner and just stares at you. And then sort of attracts you to want to go over and pet that dog. Um, that's the kind of dog we want to be. We don't want to be that dog that comes in there and licks everybody. And the first lick's not bad. Maybe the second lick's not bad. But when it gets to the point where the dog doesn't stop licking you, you want to say, hey, get this dog away from me. That's not how we want to be when it comes to utilizing our uh, social media platforms. But I wanted to point out a couple things. And I'm going to share my screen because there's a couple good research things out there that are um, really, really good um, for, um, let's see here if I can. There are some really good sites out there that talk about some of the stats. And I think what we wanna sort of establish is why is Facebook so powerful? Why is social media so powerful? And there's a site here called Zephoria.com. And uh, I was reading an article here today on Zephoria on the top 20 valuable Facebook statistics, which was updated uh, in 2018. So I urge everybody to, you know, when you get some time to take a look at this, because I think it's going to uh, make a lot of people realize why the platform of Facebook is so important. And if you're not utilizing it, um, it may be a possible reason why, um, you know, you're not uh, seeing the results that maybe you'd like to see in your business and some tricks that go along with it. But worldwide, there are over 2.27 billion monthly active Facebook users. So only 7 billion people on the planet. So that's a huge, huge users. Facebook MAUs means monthly active users, which is a 10% increase year over year. So um, really what it's saying is Facebook is too big to ignore. There are 1.15 billion mobile daily active users. So daily active users, uh, and that is taking uh, December 16th, an increase of 23% year over year. It gives the source of where it comes from. Um, mobile advertising revenue is reported and according to Facebook, it represented approximately 91% of advertising revenue in Q2, uh, second quarter 2018, up from 87 up uh, from 87% in Q2 in 2017. Um, there's 1.49 billion people on average log on to Facebook daily, and are considered daily active users. So DAU, daily active users, uh, and that represents. 9% increase year over year. Um, a huge and vastly growing number of Facebook users are active, consistent in their visits to the site, making them a promising audience for your marketing efforts. Um, there are 1.74 billion mobile active users. 
So on Facebook, on your mobile apps, your smartphones and so on uh, for December 2016, which is an increase of 21% year over year. Um, so on average, the like and share buttons are viewed across almost 10 million websites daily. Now, I think what you guys are starting to see here is the numbers are absolutely astronomical. And so, you know, we want to we want to sort of continue to teach and review on how to leverage this. Now, this doesn't necessarily affect Vox Life at this point, but in Europe, over 307 million people are on Facebook. Um, and that's from the Search Engine Journal. Um, the takeaway, this isn't just a US phenomenon. A worldwide market is available via Facebook. Now, I'm sure a lot of you that have utilized Facebook have maybe had some people reach out that, you know, were friends of a friend of a friend possibly that were, you know, somewhere in Europe, somewhere in Australia, the UK, you name it. So the reach is sometimes uh, astronomical and hard to, to fathom. It talks about, you know, the age groups, the users. It talks about five new profiles are created every second. And that stat is all Facebook 2012. Um, what it's implying here is that your potential audience on Facebook is growing exponentially. Um, Facebook users are 76% 70 female out of 100% of all females and 66% male out of 100% of all males. This stat is one that you really have to think about because it's comparing the percentage of all females against the percentage of all males who are on Facebook. So um, they're saying, sorry for the confusion here. Um, to dig a little deeper, uh, you can take a look at this study and it gives you the link to do that. Um, the highest traffic occurs midweek between 1 to 3 p.m. according to this source. Um, on another note, a Facebook post at 7 p.m. will result in more clicks on average than posting at 8 p.m. That's by Forbes uh, magazine. Um, how this can help you, you have the potential to reach more customers and drive higher traffic uh, to your site or to your brand during peak usage times where people may be more likely uh, to be engaged in the evenings. Um, this statistic may be a factor when you are planning social communication, scheduling, and so on. Um, on Thursdays and Fridays, heading towards the weekend, engagement in Facebook is 18% higher. Um, again, this information um, is, is there to determine when to post in order to op optimize your social media marketing uh, efforts. This was an interesting one that I saw that there are 83 million fake profiles. And I'm sure we've got all those, you know, messages before that, you know, hey, I want to be friends. I want to do this. I want to do that. Um, and it says here that nothing is perfect. So it shows you that even Facebook is not perfect. When we look at Vox Life and we look at our company and we think that, you know, we're not uh, perfect and we should be doing this better and that better, well, even some of the biggest companies on the planet are, are still not perfect. So um, I think they're, um, you know, Facebook is still trying to find ways to identify these. But there's also ways that, you know, people use fake profiles in strategic efforts in marketing. So, you know, what they're saying is, also fake or not, these are still potential consumers. There are various reasons for fake profiles, including professionals doing testing and research and people who want to segment their Facebook use more than is possible with one account. So photo uploads, um, total of 300 million photo uploads on Facebook per day. Those numbers are just staggering. The average time spent on Facebook visit is 20 minutes. So what this means for you is that you could have a short period of time to make your impression. So use it wisely and relevant and interesting. Every second seconds on every 60 seconds on Facebook, 510,000 comments are posted. Um, so if, you, excuse me, if you haven't muted your uh, microphones, can you please mute? I think it might be Kelly Dorian. Yeah, I just muted you, Kelly. Um, Anyways, uh, every sec 60 seconds, 510,000 comments are posted, 293,000 statuses are updated, and 136,000 photos are uploaded. Now, you know, again, this is showing a lot of engaged and active users, but also a huge amount of information competing 
for their attention. So that's why a lot of times you'll see feeds and how fast they move and how fast things get pushed down the, the feed. So anyways, there's a few other points in here that you can go and look at, but I urge you to take the time to go in and have a look at some of these statistics that will maybe make you have a second look and give you a better understanding of why it's important to leverage Facebook. Now, I am certainly no Facebook expert by any means. I continue to learn, I continue to do research as much as I can and as much as I can find time. But I wanted to be able to re reiterate to the field um, that I have built a team of over 6,200 people on my top eight in a period of just over two and a half years and 98% of it was done on Facebook. So I wasn't on Facebook until January of 2014. Like most people, I didn't want anybody to know my business. I didn't want anybody to know what I was doing and uh, therefore I had no use of it. But once I understood the importance of Facebook and utilizing it to build a business and create leads and to build my network, it certainly opened up the door for me to learn Facebook and to understand why it's important. And I think one of the biggest things for me in a network marketing business is the ability to build the brand of you on Facebook. And people are going to resonate with you. And I think that a lot of times we look at it and say, well, should we be doing a business page or what they sometimes call a fan page? Or should we be doing it on our profile? And if we're careful, I mean, your biggest audience that you'll ever have as you're growing is going to be, in my opinion, on your own personal page. Um, one of the key things to remember is that you can go into your settings on your Facebook um, under the little arrow at the top, and maybe I can just share that as well, just a second here. Um, you can go into your Facebook page under your under this arrow here, and you can go into um, your settings. And if you go into your settings, you want to go into your public posts over here on the left. Click on public posts and make sure that you're on the public setting. Now, if you click here, it says who can follow me. Because a lot of times what happens is if you look at guys like Gary Vaynerchuk and you look at, you know, um, Tony Robbins and you uh, look at uh, some of these amazing leaders that, that are out there, uh, Ray Higdon, um, Big Al, um, Scheider, um, a lot of times what happens is they might have, you know, uh, over, you know, literally hundreds of thousands of followers, right? Now, Facebook only allows you right now to have 5,000 friends. So what you want to make sure is that there's people out there that want to be interested in what you're doing, and they may just want to follow. So the only two settings you have here is public or friends. I don't know why anybody, if you're utilizing Facebook as a business, would want to not have it on public. And we'll go on further uh, doing some trainings on how to build lists and segregate lists and how to switch posts and so on uh, from the public to the friends only or friends setting. But I suggest if, if you're using your Facebook um, that you put this public setting on and therefore it will allow you to have a follow button that people can click on and um, just follow you to look at content before maybe they're ready to reach out to you. So um, that's an important key element to, to think about as well. But one of the things we want to talk about is how important is it on branding yourself? Um, I think your brand uh, of who you are is critical, is absolutely critical to your Vox Life business. Um, we've heard it from Eric Worre before. We've heard it from a number of leaders that, you know, we want to build the brand. We want to have people that resonate and are attracted to you. And we've heard the saying before, your vibe attracts your tribe. Um, you want to build the brand of you. And we use a system and have taught a system called the 1041 system. Now, on the files tab in your back office, or sorry, in your, uh, on the team page, um, I might share that again and, we'll, and I'll just show everybody while we're on here. And I'm going to try and wrap this up relatively quickly if we can. If you go to the Team Voxination page, 
and you go into the files tab over here on the left and you click on the files tab you can scroll up and you'll see all the files in here and on this believe and achieve game plan in here you'll see i believe it starts on page nine it talks about branding yourself your brand on social media is, a, is critical to your Vox Life business. As always, be sure your posts on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram reflect you in a positive manner. When it comes to social media, ask yourself these questions. What's the feeling I want people to have when they land on my page? What's the feeling I want people to have when they meet me in person? And I think they should be cohesive. Um, what can people count on from me? And what are the three things I'm most passionate about? One business, one personal, one general. What are the three greatest personality, my three greatest personality traits? I mean, do you like to lead? Do you like to inspire people? Um, and believe me, keep your posts as positive as possible. I know sometimes as humans, we all get down and we want to, you know, we want to take out our vengeance on people. I've been no different. I've had times in my life where I want to do the same and Facebook was kind of the weapon of choice. Um, but don't do that. <laughs> Please don't do that. You learn from my mistakes. Um, keep your post positive people, you know, they, they can relate to positive uplifting things. If you're funny, post funny things. If you're, if you like to be laughed at, post things that, you know, make you look, you know, like a goofball, if that's what it is, dancing on the screen, whatever. I posted me dancing on the screen before and I had friends reach out to me and say, have you lost your marbles? And I said, no, I'm just happy. Right. So um, don't be afraid to be who you are. Um, what are the three words that describe who you are? Um, what, what problems can you help solve in the world? You know, can you help people with some of their pain issues? In two sentences, here's a description of who I am and what I'm about. Um, so, um, you know, there's there's that and, and why and how to pay, post on Facebook. Um, I'm a firm believer that you know, I don't like to and have never liked to utilize the, the, the name Vox Life on any of my posts. And if you go through my feed, uh, my personal wall, you'll never see anything. And one of the biggest things that I had to overcome was my fear of, of what I was doing. Well, when you get to that point where you love so much what you do, what you do and I've said this before, that your love will dispel any fear. And I've had people say, well, I'm so afraid what, you know, my family is going to think about me. And I'm so afraid of, you know, what my friends are going to think about me. And you've heard our leader, Jay, say before, if people don't want to talk about money and their friends, they don't want to talk about money with this opportunity, then get new friends. I mean, he said that very plain as day. Now, <laughs> that's pretty bold. But from my perspective, if somebody doesn't support you on your journey and what you're doing, then you might have to question, are they really your friend? You know, friends are supposed to support you and uplift you and undergird you and, and celebrate your successes and celebrate the fact that you're, you know, trying to help the world with this mission. So I know for a fact that I've lost friends over it. And when the friends see your success, they want to be your friends again. Right. So really how pure was their friendship? So we have to look at it and say, is my personal wall is it something I can leverage with confidence and no fear about my love of what I'm doing and who I am and who I'm becoming? And I think that's a key factor that you have to look at. So you have to be able to, you know, share your enthusiasm. We'll just creep down here. I use a system that we've talked about called 1041. And the 1041 system is something, it's just a guideline that you can utilize about how many posts you want to look at to leverage your personal wall to be able to build your following. Now, I've personally mentored some people uh, on this call before and said, hey, reach out to people on our team and ask them to be friends. And they're going to support your posts. And as you grow your network, they're going to support your posts. You're going to support theirs. And every time there was a like or an emoji or a comment, it bumps that post back up into the feed in the, in the main news feed when you post on your page. So 10 posts a week should relate to your branding, to who you are. You know, in the case of Pat Ferris, loves horses. 
He posts about horses. Angela Corn's one of, you know, uh, Pat and Angela that were, were friends. We, we created great friendships at, uh, at my place up north uh, in a contest I ran, and I learned a lot about what they, what they uh, liked. And as we became friends on Facebook, you know, I see what they like. They like, you know, their, their animals, their dogs, their, their um, you know, their, their place where they live. Um, they like funny stuff. So those 10 posts are about who they are, their, their brand. I mean, I post, I love to fish. I love to be outdoors. Um, and uh, I post about that because it's something that I love. Um, these are posts that are non-business related. Funny post, something that might have struck you as funny. Um, share it, copy and paste it, whatever. Um, inspirational, something I love to try and inspire people. Um, because so many people have inspired me. I try to give back where I can. So I do a lot of inspirational posts to try and help people believe in themselves. Um, maybe hobbies that we have. What do you like to do? Snowmobile, water ski, downhill ski, whatever it happens to be. Post those things 10 times a week. Create a following. Go to your friends tab at the top of the page. Um, also, let me just get out of here just for one second. If you go... Um, back to the top of your fit page, you can always click on friends here and you can go through your friends and you can see Gary Barone has, I have two mutual friends, Paul Austin and Bill Edwards. Um, well, I might send him a friend request and say, Hey Gary, we've got a couple mutual friends. Um, love to share and learn a little bit about you. And, and uh, if you're okay with it, uh, please accept my friend request. Well, Gary might have a thousand friends. And I really want to leverage Gary's network to help build my Vox business. Because if I put a post on my personal wall and it's on the public setting and Gary happens to like my post, then all his friends and his network of people have the opportunity to see my post in the news feed if they're on there. So let me just go back here to the believe and achieve. So, We've talked about um, the, uh, you know, the importance of building your brand on Facebook. So um, we want to talk about those 10 posts a week. And those posts can be, generally I find the most success that I've had is be between 7 and 9 o'clock at night. Also, uh, sometimes early in the morning, there's a lot of people that have their coffee and jump on Facebook for a few minutes. Um, so a lot of times before, you know, 7, 30, 8 o'clock in the morning, before people are at their, their work. Um, and also sometimes between 12 and one are great times because people are on their lunch break and they jump on their uh, mobile apps, usually phone, um, because most companies have computers locked down. You're not allowed to go on social media at most companies now. Um, so those are good times um, that, that you can utilize and leverage. So four posts a week should be sort of business um, success stories, um, something to do, do with uh, Vox Life. Um, so it might be a testimonial. You know, it might be something like, you know, um, after watching my friend, whoever it is, experience relief um, and joy from wearing the Vox Life or from I would change this to wearable neurotech, I decided it was time for me to see what wearing you know, our wearable neurotech technology um, uh, could be, could do for me. The results were fantastic. I'm pleased to say these become part of my everyday wellness. I'd love to share this amazing technology with my friends to help improve your quality of life. Who's in now, granted, these are just samples and my experience has been, you know, this will probably be edited. Uh, I don't like using the word Vox life and I'll tell you why I don't want people going and doing their own research. I don't want them Googling it. I want to create curiosity. I want them to ask me, what is wearable neurotech? What is HPT? And then I want to take the, the conversation offline. And I want to be able to private message them. And I want to be able to set up a secondary meeting, either um, via phone or possibly at a coffee shop or whatever. But the idea of Facebook is not to post your um, you know, website out there it's not to say, hey, come and buy these amazing socks from me. Um, this is all about creating a, you know, a feel and creating curiosity out there 
without the fact uh, or without um, uh, pissing people off, to be quite honest with you, without, you know, telling people, you know, hey, um, this is what I'm doing and you should join me. What you want to do is create that curiosity um, in people to, uh, to join you. So certainly um, the, uh, the four posts a week that you post at the prime times, like between seven and we have the Vo Vox Life post ideas page, which I'll go to here, which I hope you're all a part of. And the idea of this post is that this group uh, is dedicated to help those just starting their Vox Life business or anyone needing assistance with post ideas, support, and so on. So the idea of this page was anybody on our team, anybody in Vox Life that's had success with a post on their wall, please share it and add it here so the rest of the team, hashtag one team, can utilize your post, re-edit it, put it on, the, on their page in order to do this. Let's just say, I love this post. Elizabeth Thomas put this post up and said, the final stage of healing is, use, is using what happens to you to help other people. And that does, now that to me certainly um, speaks very loud and clear to us being product users first and so on. So if I wanted to take this to my, you know, utilize this to my page on a Mac, I right click it. Um, I can, I can um, take this post and I can save the image as and a drop down and I can save it as, you know, um, I could call it helping others. Um, and then I don't need all these numbers here. And I can just go save this to my pictures and just go save. When you get saving so many pictures, half the time it's hard to find and remember what you name them at sometimes. But um, then I can go in and use whatever text I want. You can go in here, um, private pages and secret groups like we are with Vox Life Post Ideas, you can't share. You have to save the picture and then you have to copy and paste it. So in, in this particular case here, saying wearable neurotech, it's a great post. It is what it is. Um, you know, somebody's got to really search hard to be able to find the Vox Life logo there and do the research. But you could take some of this. If this was text that you wanted to use, you could copy it and, uh, and paste it and then edit it before you post your post. So anything in this page, if you're not overly creative and you don't know how to um, come up with something to post, use it from somebody else, see something that resonates with you on somebody else's page and just private message them and say, hey, would it be all right if I shared your post on your, from your personal page? Um, a lot of times I don't necessarily like to see everybody, can I share, can I share, can I share? Uh, I'd rather have them um, personally, you know, um, message me and ask me. Um, but 99.9% .9 of the time, I tell the field, if I have anything on my page that resonates with you, please share it. You don't have to share it. I would rather see you save the picture, copy it, make it your own text, make it, edit, edit it yourself um, for doing that. And one of the key things that we, that we kind of ne neglect is when we look at um, who likes our post. So this is an idea. You can do a post and you can change it on your post by this little button right here where the little globe is. You can change it. I suggest you do every post on your wall if you're utilizing it to build your brand and to utilize this for uh, building your business to always do it on the public setting. Okay, so uh, this particular post here, I said, always be who you are, be your true self, and the right people will come into your life. So that's building my, my brand. So I can go in here and I like to look at and say, okay, I can go in here and look at my likes. And I can go on my page and I can go through all the people here and say, okay, what people are Vox people and what people aren't Vox people? And so the ones that aren't, I can go through and I can say, okay, uh, Janice Bandman, thank you so much. I can uh, send her a private message and I can go, Janice, thank you so much for the like on my page. I really appreciate the support. Hope you're doing well. Because what you're trying to do is build a relationship with people. There's a reason she liked that. There's something that resonated with her. So looking at your likes and making sure you see who's following and who's liking your posts is key to building relationships. And, um, you know, I think it's important 
that you know you create those re relationships and thank people. Now, we could do another 20 minutes or 30 minutes uh, of training on this. We're not going to do it for sake of time. There's one other thing I just wanted to go over because we're still getting um, a lot of um, people that um, are doing welcome posts to their new associates on our team vaccination page. And I just want to go over this again as to um, when you have a new associate that you want to add to our team vaccination page. Right here is where you add the numbers. So let's just say, for instance, um, I want to, you know, let's just say my wife's name because I know she's not in this team page is a new member. So we're friends on Facebook and the only way you can add them to this page or any other of our closed groups is you have to be friends with them on Facebook. So as you start to type their name and sometimes you have to type out their whole name and sometimes you have to do it without spaces. You just got to play around with it. But generally when you type their name, so now I can say click on her name, right? So I can go and it says Sarah St. Ammon has been invited to the group. So I knew my, know my new associate is added to the group. Now, if I want to make a, a post about Sarah, I could go to Sarah's wall. I could save a picture, ask her her permission, add her to the page. And when I start to write a post to my new associate, I first of all could go to a picture and I could go upload a picture and I could go in here. I saved it. And let's just say Sarah was in here. Um, We'll just take Sarah and Terry at Al Dante, which is a restaurant. I'm gonna, I'll delete this post after for, um, so it loads a picture and I could say, you know, I am so excited, uh, exciter, excited for Sarah. So sometimes if it doesn't show in here, before you do it, you have to actually refresh the page. So what I mean by ref refreshing the page is you go up here and you refresh the page or reload the page. Right? It's reloading here. I'm downstairs in my house, in my office, and sometimes the internet's not the greatest down here. Hey, Terry, I was just going to mention quickly um, that... Um, if you, you you just i just realized something it said that sarah was invited and that is yeah and that's based on so that has now went into the invited category so yeah. that is she has her privacy settings really high so that's why you can't tag her right now yeah exactly sometimes yeah and that's a great point paul because yes sometimes it it does um affect uh based on your uh it goes into the invited file. So if you're inviting somebody and their privacy settings are set high, um, they uh, and you can't tag them, there's two, one of two reasons. Either the page hasn't been refreshed uh, and or they're in the invited file because their settings, uh, security settings are such that they need to accept the invite um, to uh, be able to go in there. So great point, Paul. Um, so check with your associate um, once you've added them to the team page uh, and make sure that they um, did get uh, the invite if you can't tag them um, in the post, right? Because we're getting some orphan people in there that we're trying to work through, um, Paul and I, to, to make that. So we're gonna do some more and we're gonna continue to review on Facebook. Uh, but just before we go, because we're running out of time here, guys, I just wanna open up um, to a couple people because I've done some personal um, training and conversations with a couple people that were really afraid of utilizing um, their uh, Facebook walls for you know their personal uh, business so I'm going to ask um, let's go to uh, Tracy Nachai first and let me see Tracy 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 I know you're here somewhere um, I'm gonna unmute you Tracy can you hear me yes I can Terry Hi, welcome. Good to see you on the call. Thanks for being here. Um, just quickly, Tracy, I know that you and I have talked a lot, and that was one of your things um, about Facebook. And um, I know that you've come a long way with utilizing Facebook. So just quickly in a, in a couple of minutes here, just explain how um, Facebook has helped you uh, 
uh, leverage your business, uh, your personal wall, live video, so on that you've done to help you grow your business? Yeah, I think for me, it's, it's a little bit of a different take on it, Terry. And for me, it's grown my business sort of indirectly because as you well know, and as I've mentioned in other videos, um, when I came into the business, I'd been through a lot of personal stuff and my mindset was rather negative and fear-based and not really thinking that I could have success, especially through a social media aspect. And you challenged me to start doing videos and I was quite pleasantly surprised and, and I would even say shocked that when I did that and it took me about nine tries to pre-record it before I was confident enough to post it but just doing something that was facing my fear and putting it on social media for my new Vox friends to see really grew my confidence and and I think my sense that I could have something to contribute and to see such a warm response for the community really built my confidence and, and took me from a place where I wasn't sure I was able to or even wanted to do this business to something where I, I solidified in my passion and my desire to do that. And as I did more of those videos and could post it after one or two tries or even on the first try, my confidence grew and I built this friendship and this network of people in Vox that not only I would communicate with on the team page, but became part of my Facebook friends on my personal page. And like you say, they support me, whether it's a personal post, whether it's a business post, um, they like it, they um, share it, they comment on it. And I do the same and interact with them. And so now my personal friends are seeing, you know, these positive comments and this enthusiasm about my business that it gathers their attention. And I, I saw a comment in the chat room about it's not so much your friends you want to get the word out to, but it's your friends of friends and people that don't really know you because that two or three degrees of separation, there seems to be more of an openness to what you're doing. And when you post enough of that in that 10 for one ratio, people start to raise their eyebrow and they start to pay attention to that. And I, in some instances, didn't think anybody was paying attention. And I actually had someone say to me, yeah, I've been watching your posts and, you know, I'd like to know more about this, this sock and insole thing you're doing. And I was quite surprised at that. And, and so there are people watching. And even though you might not get that direct feedback, they are keeping an eye on it. So for me, it's really been an indirect, positive approach. And I'm so grateful for your push, Terry, and for putting me in touch with um, – people in this Vox family that um, encouraging me to reach out and add people to be my friends who truly have become friends and supported me and allowed me to build my business. And uh, I do believe I'm going slow and steady to win the race and going slow to go fast. And I'm seeing the fruits of that labor. So being patient really helps out as well, but being persistent. So um, I will be honest, I, I don't always make my 15 posts a week. Okay. But um, I'm gentle with myself and I give myself a pat on the back when I do well and I give myself that space when I need to step back because I find I need time to, you know, that introverted rejuvenation and sometimes being on Facebook regularly every day, every week and posting is overwhelming for me and I need to recharge. So I think it's a little bit different for everybody and what works for them and I'm sort of finding my groove and it really is worth the time and the persistence. Well, that's fantastic, Tracy, and, and good for you. And again, it comes back to obviously getting out of your comfort zone. And, um, and good for you. Kudos for you for doing that. And the 1041 system is it, it's just a guideline, right? right? It's not a rule. It's a guideline to, you know, get out of your comfort zone and start to leverage um, Facebook. There's a great point that, that Terry Lynn Parker put on there and Jay. And we have, to be, we have to be careful because, you know, Facebook sometimes can throw you in jail and they can penalize you. If you're spamming people to be friends on your page, you can get into trouble. If you are utilizing your profile page and sharing so much stuff, um, Facebook will see that as spamming people. So that's why I say a lot of times, try not to share it. Try to um, save the image and copy and paste the text and edit it, right? It sometimes, uh, is able to fool, but we don't want to be business, business, business. That's why we want 10 posts a week of what you're doing. And that's why we don't want to say Vox Life either. We want to say uh, amazing technology, HPT, whatever. Um, so that's very, very important. So thank you so much, Tracy, for, for sharing that, uh, that uh, story and um, your successes on Facebook and getting out of your comfort zone. And I'm going to ask one more person. I know um, Angela Corns. 
uh, is down in uh, Boynton Beach, Florida. Hi, Angela, can you hear me? Let me just unmute her, there you are. Can you hear me now, Angela? Yep, I have you. Great, well thank you for being on the call tonight. And um, I know that you and I have spoken a number of times about leveraging Facebook and utilizing uh, Facebook in a way that um, will build uh, your, you know, your business and it help you increase with leads and those that are seeing you and that it takes time and, it, and you have to be consistent with it because people are watching. So just tell a little bit about how Facebook um, has helped you leverage your business and improve your business, your leads, um, your contacts and so on uh, in your network of people. Well, I'm one that started out with a business page and mm -hmm. learned quickly that there's not too many people that end up following your business page and I was reposting onto my personal page. So I was able, I, I, I stopped my business page. It's not worth it. It's too much work and not enough followers. So my personal page became public and I started to change the content that I was posting. And so with that, I get a lot more interaction and with interaction, you get just as Terry described, you get all of their friends seeing your posts as well. Um, I never post the words Vox Life or Vox. It's always HPT or Neurotech. Um, because you want to create that curiosity and this week was a perfect example that um, I have people 95% of my business is Facebook I'll just put that out there but I have people that have been lurking in the background for the last two years that I've never spoken to um, maybe I've met them at one point in life several years ago maybe not um, but I have people from all over the world that have reached out to me this week for Christmas gifts or some post that I just changed one word on that I've posted before, but this time around I changed one word and it caught their attention. Sure. So, um, but just yeah. consistency and keeping things positive is huge. Yes. And I, and I think one of the key things we can mention at this point too, is if you want to see other people's posts, um, we talk about algorithms and, and what that means. And a lot of times if you are in the news feed, if you want people to see your stuff, go in and use an emoji, use a happy face, use a smiley, a peace sign, a clap, a hello, a great, a word or anything, because in order to get people, you always wonder sometimes why aren't people, why am I not seeing somebody else's stuff when I used to see it? Well, it's because you haven't interacted and Facebook algorithm algorithms see that interaction or not interaction, right? So it's important to give out as well. And I don't expect anybody to be on Facebook on all hours. I mean, I'm on an incredibly a long time. I've built a, you know, a, a really, really big business um, with this. And so I'm not expecting people to do necessarily uh, or spend the time that I spend, but consistency has been key for me because people are watching and saying, you know, is this kind of a fly by night thing that he's doing or um, are they really growing that fast? Are they, you know, let me, you know, and in time I'll have to learn more. But I also need, if people want to see my stuff, I need to go onto the news feed and I need to react to um, friends of mine that aren't on, on uh, you know, Vox Life friends or whatever. So um, leveraging it as a tool or as a machine to build your network is very important. And I know, Angela, you've done a great job at that um, and, uh, you know, utilizing and, and somebody who's, you know, busy in the horse world and um, so on it's it's not always easy to find the time to uh, do that so would you say that you know Facebook has become an integral part of how you're growing your your Vox Life business down the road oh absolutely it's I mean 95% of my Vox Life business happens because of Facebook great well that's great well I really appreciate you guys sharing Thank you uh, so much, Angela. And um, I don't want to keep everybody. I want to respect this. This call has got a little longer than, than I had anticipated. But uh, um, there's a lot to learn and there's a lot to know on Facebook. Don't be afraid um, to embrace Facebook. Um, if you have a question, there's a lot of good people that can help you. Terry Lynn Parker um, and, and her husband, Jay, um, they're great Facebook people. Um, if you have a question about Facebook, post it in the team page. Um, you know, reach up to your sponsor. If not, reach above them. Um, you know, if you have a question about Facebook and you want to embrace it, 
don't be afraid of it. You, you, um, you can learn it. As I said, I, w I wasn't even on Facebook in 2014. So um, I, I only learned how to use it. And, um, and you can learn. And it is a vital tool for growing your business. So we're going to um, do more training on Facebook as we go. I think it's great review. If you have any questions about how to add, how to tag, whatever, we'll do some trainings on tagging. Um, we'll do some uh, trainings on, on uh, again, um, the proper times, how to use your page, how to do settings, those sort of things. Because we know that there's a large majority of people out there that um, – you know, aren't using Facebook to the degree that they, they could be. Um, and whatever the reasons are, we're going to help you with that. We're going to help um, eliminate the fear. We're going to try and teach you the right way. We got great people like Tracy and Angela that uh, will be more than willing to help. They're on the Team Voxination page. And uh, we're excited to help you utilize and leverage Facebook on your personal profile to help you get leads and help you grow your business. So just one more plug before we go. Anybody that's on this call, we have a opportunity event in Toronto on January 12th from one o'clock to 4 p.m. There's only 200 tickets. It's only been posted for about two and a half or three hours. There are already, last time I checked, there were already 51 tickets sold. So, um, there, uh, it will probably go. I'm assuming it will sell out. It's a opportunity event. Events are key to build your business. Bring guests. We're allowing each associate to bring only two, unless special request, uh, unless we see, because we got to make it fair to every associate to be able to bring a guest. For every guest you bring, you're going to get your name in uh, to a draw. If you bring two, you'll get your name in twice to a draw for a $600 value gold pack. And I'm gonna see if I can twist Uncle Jay to give us another gold pack. So that means if you win and you're there and you gotta be there to win, that means $1,200 in your pocket. So I urge you, it's a great way to grow your business. Bring some friends. It's only from one o'clock to four o'clock. We're gonna do a little training. We're gonna play some videos. Jay, um, has promised that he will speak, whether live or in person. He's not, uh, or whether live on uh, on uh, live stream um, or whether in person. We're not quite sure what his schedule is, but I'm strong arming him to be there. Going to do the best I can, and I certainly appreciate everybody being on this call tonight. So, with that, I bid you all adieu. Have a great night. Merry Christmas to everybody. Happy and safe holidays. Spend time with your family. Count your blessings not your problems. God bless everybody. Good night. Merry Christmas. Good night. Good night, everybody. I'm going to unmute everybody. Good night. Thank you. Good night, Merry everybody. Merry Christmas. Night. Merry Christmas, night. everybody. Merry Christmas. Merry See you Christmas. in Mississauga. See you in Mississauga. Woo, woo. Let's go, Mississauga. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I heard Nancy Hen on there. Like, uh, good night, all. And then it's time for bed. Uh, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. No, we're going to sleep in bed tonight. <laughs>